The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best-selling book and widely watched television miniseries, Roots, by Alex Haley. Challenged on the historical accuracy of Roots, Haley said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. All right, we are back. I'm Michael. And I'm Lakia. And this is The The Voice Voice of of Reason. Reason. Let's get into it. The instrumental use of the history of slavery today also underlies the claim that slavery grew out of racism. For most of its long history, which includes most of the history of the human race, slavery was largely not the enslavement of racially different people, for the simple reason that only in recent centuries has either the technology or the wealth existed to go to another continent to get slaves and transport them en masse across an ocean. People were enslaved because they were vulnerable, not because of how they looked. The peoples of the Balkans were enslaved by fellow Europeans, as well as by the peoples of the Middle East, for at least six centuries before the first African was brought to the Western Hemisphere. Before the modern era, by and large, Europeans enslaved other Europeans, Asians enslaved other Asians, Africans enslaved other Africans, and the indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere enslaved other indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Slavery was not based on race, much less on theories about race. Only relatively late in history did enslavement across racial lines occur on such a scale as to promote an ideology of racism that outlasted the institution of slavery itself. Wherever a separate people were enslaved, they were disdained or despised, whether they were different by country, religion, caste, race, or tribe. I think that's interesting to note that slavery was not rooted in racism like the narrative tries to put to push today another interesting um point to note is that slavery in america it became racist in order to justify the enslavement of the people Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it was like oh we have these people here but we also have this constitution here that's saying you know all men are created evil equal and how do we get around this? Mm-hmm. So they came up with concepts and theories and, you know, evolution theories and, you know, Charles Darwin and coming up with theories of, you know, mm-hmm. black people evolving into white people and all these different theories that came along. They came afterward to justify the evil that was already being done. It's important to note that what was done, slavery, whether it be your kinsmen, whether it be the people from your your nation, a, a people from another nation, is evil. But it's also important to have your facts straight about it because you don't want to get caught up in emotions. You don't want to be caught up in um, false ideas around it that make you hate other people, hate other nations, hate other people because of the color of their skin. You don't want to get caught up in that because... That is that's that is what politicians use to deceive and manipulate you and cause you to be un- irrational. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> In Africa, the Maasai were feared slave raiders and other African tribes, either alone or in conjunction with Arabs, enslaved their more vulnerable neighbors. As late as 1891, it was reported that Manuema slavers had demoralized surrounding tribes, destroying crops, and famine reigned everywhere. Even in the early 20th century, Abyssinians were still raiding other Africans and carrying off slaves. It was 1922 before the British had gained sufficient control in Tanganyika to stamp out slavery there. Arabs were the leading slave raiders in East Africa, ranging over an area larger than all of Europe. The total number of slaves exported from East Africa during the 19th century has been estimated to be at least 2 million. The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best-selling book and widely watched television miniseries Roots by Alex Haley. Challenged on the historical accuracy of Roots, Haley said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. This instrumental use of history, or purported history, is open to the same objections as other instrumental myth-making. Do you remember the movie Roots? Mm-hmm. Do you remember how 
impactful that was to our community. It was like you have to watch Roots. Uh, yeah, I remember I really couldn't watch Roots because it was so our graphic. History. Yeah, but yeah, come to and, and to become an adult and find out that it was a myth that he used to unify the people. Mm. What kind of <laughs> sick, twisted? No, I want the truth. I want it. I I want it to be shown as it is. Right. I want to be taught what it is, fact facts based. Mm-hmm. I don't want anything dramatized. I don't want any emotions added to it. Show me what it is. I don't care how gruesome it is. I don't care. I want to see what happened mm-hmm. so that I can form my own opinions. But when you make a box office movie and you start adding details and you start adding narratives to it now you you're manipulating people now you're destroying history mm-hmm. i i think that's just crazy yeah what was mythical about it like what was the myth behind I it i think we're going to find out a little more about it but um basically he just added details that were not true okay you know and it's still details that people believe to this day mm, okay you know what i mean mm-hmm. we would have to go back and watch it and, yeah, and because I, it, Cause I, I, I vaguely remember it, like I remember yeah. little tiny parts of it, but it was like such an old movie. Like, yeah, was I haven't watched eight? it in a long time. Yeah, but I would definitely want to watch it and kind of um see ideas that's in that movie that people still believe to this day, so that right. we can kind of try to debunk some of those things. Because I think this whole narrative of slavery being um rooted in racism has a has a tight stronghold on. On black people, Mm -hmm. especially in America, Mm -hmm. when you see other black people come to this country and thrive like Nigerians and uh, other darker people like Indians come over here and they thrive. It's like, what is what's going on Mm -hmm. here? Like, what is the real issue? Because they tried to make it seem as if racism is the biggest contributor to black people not succeeding. But then you see all these other people that they don't even speak fluent English. Right. They they don't really know the culture well, yet they're able to come to this country with absolutely nothing, live in the same neighborhoods that the black people live in, and thrive. Mm -hmm. But here's the caveat. Two generations later, just two generations later, the grandchildren end up doing the same things that the black people are doing. Mm. So that first so you generation, say that culture, like the culture, yeah, effects. It's the culture. Uh-huh. It's the culture that we we um, are surrounded by. Surrounded by, we mm-hmm. prize so much, right? Um, rap culture, and it's the culture because if if the granddad comes in and he creates business opportunities mm-hmm. and all these things, the son he takes what the what the granddad <laughs> did and he does he does good as well, but then the grandchild mm-hmm. gets indoctrinated. With this victim narrative right. that they can't get ahead. Right. There's, there's and, people holding them back. The right. system's against you. Uh-huh. The only way to be cool is to look like a fool, pretty much. Mm. You can be an uh, intellectual, but if you are shown to be an intellectual, then you're frowned upon. Like, you're out. You're outcasted. They call you a, a Oreo. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or why are you speaking white, you know? Interesting, because... I never got those types of insults. And that's up. why I was saying me either. Like, I, I can't relate to that in particular. Exactly. Because I didn't really start to really educate myself until after college. Right. <laughs> Which and, sounds crazy, right? Right. Like, and you guys already hear my little accent I got going on. So, yeah, I definitely <laughs> never heard, heard those insults, but I definitely heard it from like different people. Both. Despite the impression created by Roots during the era of the massive slave trade from West Africa, a white man was more likely to catch malaria in Africa than to catch slaves himself. The average life expectancy of a white man in the interior of sub-Saharan Africa at that time was less than one year. By and large, men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere came to the coasts of Africa, bought their slaves, and left as soon as possible. Even so, the death rates among the white crews of the ships carrying slaves to the Western Hemisphere were as high as the death rates among the slaves themselves. It was only much later, after quinine and other medical measures enabled Europeans to survive where there were tropical diseases, was it possible for them to invade Africa in force and establish empires there. But by then, the Atlantic slave trade had already been ended. 
During the era of that trade, Africa was largely ruled by Africans who established the conditions under which slave sales took place. The crew of a slave ship was in no position to defy African rulers and their armies by going out across the land and capturing people willy-nilly. The stronger African peoples captured and enslaved the weaker peoples. The same pattern found over the centuries in Europe, Asia, the Western Hemisphere, and Polynesia. In the Asaland, the Ngoni and Yao swaggered over and terrorized other tribes. In Uganda, the Baganda made life miserable for their neighbors, and the Nioro and Hima of Anko enslaved Toro women and children. The Tutsi dominated the Hutu in Rwanda, the Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba, and the latter, in turn, held the Indorobo in a kind of serfdom. It was precisely the fact that Europeans, except for the Portuguese, seldom participated in the raids that captured and enslaved Africans that enabled most people in Europe and the Americas to remain oblivious to the traumatic experience that this was, with some Africans committing suicide to avoid capture and wives being whipped as they tried to cling to their husbands or children. I think it's very interesting and important that he noted that the white people were dying of disease if they, you know, Stay, like over if they here. step foot <laughs> on, the, on Africa <laughs> before they had, you know, all of these these right. advances in in uh, the medical field to be able to su not be succumb to these diseases and die. You know, it that destroys the entire na narrative. Mm -hmm. That shows you that the only way they could get these slaves what to be to communicate with other Africans, which we know that these slaves were sold to white people by other Africans, which means they already had a slave trade going on. Mm -hmm. That destroys the whole narrative because the narrative is they showed up and stole mm -hmm. these Africans <laughs> and took them to, right. to America. And it's, it, it's not that at all. Right. You know, this, this slavery was going on before white people even caught on and came down there. Oh, look, y'all doing the same thing we're doing in Europe. That had to be a co uh, collaborative effort mm -hmm. in order to get the Africans to America. Right. Yeah. To the Caribbeans. Especially they yeah. knowing their territory and everything. Like, it wouldn't be easy just to go on someone else's land and, like, just catch them. They don't know the terrain. Yeah, they don't know the, the animals. Terrain. They don't know anything right. about that land. Right. Tribes, the warring tribes. That, right. Of course, you're going to have tribes that are more um, vicious than other tribes. Mm -hmm. Like, you think you just show up right, and like, just do whatever you want to do? You can't you even know? do that today. You can't just show up anywhere and just do whatever you right. want to do. You think it, it was different back right. then? Like, I'm going to go to Chicago. <laughs> 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 like, no. <nah. laughs> what did y'all think? Did y'all like this content? Make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank y'all for joining us. Have a good one.